Cuomo, Governor Cuomo, officially is done as governor. There's that funny story of him leaving the dog. I, I, who, what, what are you supposed to believe in this day and age? But anyway, he's gone. And New York can breathe a sigh of relief because they got rid of the sexual deviant that is Andrew Cuomo. If you've seen any of my videos about Andrew Como, you know how I feel about that man. You know, his sexual proclivities, as abhorrent as they are, he's done way worse things. Okay? And this all ties in to what happened today. Now, People need to look at the whole story as a whole, from beginning to end. Like the Emmys rescinded their their the the Emmy they gave to him. They took it away. You know. I mean, what else can they do, right? The guy is a sexual deviant. The DA said so. But you won't hear that on CNN. You know. You won't hear, oh, by the way, his his Emmy that he won for for his uh, his COVID press briefings, which was just a smoke screen to cover what he was really doing. Yeah, they got rescinded. Yeah, you'll never hear that on CNN. But most of the CNN viewership, they're on to the next thing, right? I mean, they're desperately searching for the next thing. If, if you were to pay attention there's a reason why, and I, I saw it on the, the morning news today. I don't really watch the morning news here, but I was just glancing at it because my significant other was watching it. Three stories in a row was all about COVID and the fear. And different, different leaders talking about what we need to do. Oh, we need to lock down this. We need to lock down that. We need to educate people. We need to educate that. Kind of soft language, but still, you know what their intentions are. They're doing it in Australia, they're doing it in other countries, okay? And this is all they have, this is all they have. In, in this moment of crisis, right now, when really all we should be focusing on is not the fucking spending bill, not the voting rights bill, not Andrew Cuomo, you know, even though all, all those things are important, what we should be focusing on and nothing else, for, forget partisan lines, is getting all the Americans, and I'm saying Americans first. They're, the numbers that got leaked, 20,000 Afghanis, but only 4,000 Americans? What the fuck? Not one Afghani should have fucking made it out until all the Americans were out. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. But no, 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 no. It, it doesn't make any sense. And the press, I mean, you guys are asking the questions, but then the guy doesn't even answer the question and then you don't call him out on it. Well, that's because you don't want to lose your press credentials, right? Because if, if you start calling him out on live TV, they're just not going to give you a press pass. That's what they're going to do, which is horrible. But again, like someone needs to fall on their sword and, and actually do that. Fucking ask the question right out so it's in the public record. If you lose your press pass, you lose your press pass. That just shows and proves the reason why the First Amendment is so important. Freedom of the press. Because if they can do that, that just shows you what they feel about the First Amendment. You know? If they really cared about the First Amendment, you could ask them any question, no matter how uncomfortable it is, and you'd be safe in knowing that you're not going to have your press credentials rescinded. But that's why some of them ask tough questions, but when when the person that they're asking the question sidesteps the answer, they don't follow up on it. Well, also because the president just walks away when he's done talking. He just walks away. He doesn't even take questions. He, I, think of another president that did that. I can't think of one. As much as you guys like to harp on Donald Trump, that man was not afraid of the press. 
good or bad, he wasn't afraid of the press. You know? And I'm sorry, but that appeals to a lot of Americans. Somebody who's not afraid to tell it like it is. I mean, as hard as it is for you guys to wrap your head around that, I mean, but look at what you got now. You got somebody that's totally afraid of the press. Even his own buddies on the left, his own left-wing media, he's afraid to talk to them. Because they're forced to fucking point out, dude, you like fucked up big time. Uh, you know, all you have to do is just walk away. Just walk away. Anyway, back to Cuomo. So, people are missing, and it's 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 easy to miss these things because there's so many things going on, and your attention's getting pulled in so many directions. It's easy to miss these things, but it's there if you fucking look. Today, today, his replacement, the female, the female governor of New York, they up the tally of COVID deaths in New York by 12,000. So the official tally went up by 12,000. Now, think about that, man. Think about that. From their official tally, which by the way, was already the highest in the nation, it just went up 12,000, okay? That should shock everybody, everybody. Wait, why now? Why now? Is, is all of a sudden the leadership in the fucking in the governorship is, is is honest now? No, you gotta understand. She she, she can just say hey, well, this was done under Cuomo. I just became governor yesterday. Okay. So she her feet's not gonna be held to the fire, even though she was the lieutenant governor. You know, she's partly responsible, but. 12,000, go look it up, man. That just happened today. So on top of being the most deadliest state in the nation for COVID, now they added 12,000 more onto that fucking number. Now, we already knew this if you were paying attention. The whole nursing home scandal, all that, we already knew this. Now, however, how many other states are like this? I would have to assume every Democratic state is underreporting the death count. Okay? And again, that number, how much are you supposed to read into that? You know? You die in a car accident, but you had the COVID, they might miss you as dying of the COVID. You know? But whatever. Whether it's true or not, it's still shocking. 12,000 added. Like, where was those 12,000 people six months ago? I mean, what, what? Did that just happen in the last six months? No. No, 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 no. That happened under Cuomo last year. That's when that happened. And he hid it from the public. But anyways, so why? Why are they releasing that? Why are they changing the number now? You know? I think it ties into why he was removed. Well, he wasn't removed because of the deaths. He was removed because of the, the sexual... Uh, Harassment allegations, okay? And not allegations, the DA said it happened, okay? Again, maybe they're real, maybe they're not, okay? And you know, stay with me on this now. Why would these all these women fucking make these allegations if it wasn't real? You know, there's so many of them. And it's backed up by the DA. Well, think about it. Think about it. This man... If that 12,000 more deaths is, is real, all these people died under him because of his policies. While he was being touted as the best governor that has the best response for COVID, and oh, he's such a good guy, and everybody loves him, right? Trevor Noah, Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, all you fucks that licked his bunghole turns out he's got the worst response to COVID, you know? So think about it. He has that scandal going on, okay? Which, again, the media covered for him. Looking at you, Chris Cuomo and CNN, you guys covered that shit up.
even though that's going on, he was still useful to the establishment because he's like, okay, look at this. That they could say, look at this guy. He's so great. Look, the, the Emmys are giving him an award. He wrote a book. Everybody loves him. He's the anti-Trump. Look how good of a leader he is compared to the president. Blah, 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 blah. He was useful. But then when all that shit couldn't be hidden anymore, the truth that he actually had the worst policy, then he wasn't useful anymore. Like, well, okay, need to get rid of him. Well, this can't be made public, you know? And he's guaranteed, he's like top dude. Dude, I'm in, I'm in deep shit. You guys gotta get me out of here, man. I, 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 I fucking covered for you guys this whole time. I put my face on TV every fucking day. Now I'm in trouble. Why don't we, why don't we have a sexual harassment scandal? You're not gonna get in trouble because remember, even though all these allegations came out and the DA said that this happened, they're not prosecuting him. And he will not be prosecuted. Because if some uppity DA does try to bring charges against him, his former lieutenant governor, who's governor, will just pardon him. That's how it works. That is how it works. So he made a deal. The sexual harassment things might be totally false, but that's a way to take attention from what the true crime is and to get rid of him, right? And, and now you won't get in trouble. Now he's drawing a pension that the, that the state of New York, you taxpayers in New York are paying for this guy, right? He's not gonna get in trouble for any of his crimes, okay? I mean, I don't know how somebody that has sexual harassment claims backed up by an investigation, right? By at least 11 women and how he's not locked up. I don't know how that works. Well, there you go. Because he's connected and because he had a purpose, okay? The Democrats are gonna take care of their own, even if they're ab abhorrent little fucking rats like fucking Andrew Cuomo. They're gonna take care of their own. So I think that's what the, the real story is. This whole sexual thing was to get rid of him, right? Allow him to leave and to take attention away from the true crime. The true crime is how he let all those old people in, in freaking New York die because of his policy. It's all right there. 12,000 more deaths, you know? Again, this will not be front page news, why? Because the Afghanistan thing, everybody's running with that, which again, is just a cover story too. A total cover story. Again, I, I, I'll say this again, if this was Donald Trump and Donald Trump had done this, the whole Afghanistan mess, he'd be impeached right now. As we speak, he'd be impeached right now. Because it's Joe Biden. Nope, nothing, nothing. In fact, that man can get up on national television and spew lies, complete lies, and then walk away without taking any questions. This is your president, this is my president. This guy, what he's done with this, just with this alone, not even counting all the other mistakes he's made. The border crisis, the, the crazy spending that's making this inflation, right? Which may not be a, which maybe you don't see, right? I mean, you, you have to see it because you gotta put gas in your car, you gotta go to the grocery store, right? And someone like me, who has to buy construction materials, okay, to do work. Well, all construction materials are up 200, 300%, right? There are plenty of people, like I said, I've lost at least two jobs because of the inflation. I can't pay that, that's way too much money. I was only looking to pay, to spend about this amount of money. And nothing I can do about the price of materials, man. You know, I can't do anything about that. That's affecting me personally and my livelihood and my ability to make money my ability to put food on my table. All these things, this is the thing they're focusing on and, and rightfully so because it's a humanitarian crisis and not only that, but the way it makes us look to 
not only our allies, but to our enemies. It makes us look weak and incom incompetent, and they're already taking advantage of it. They're already taking Russia and China, every country is taking advantage of it. It won't be long to that fat man in Korea's lobbing rockets again. Believe me, it won't be long till he's doing that. It won't be long till the Iranians are threatening Israel with a nuclear bomb. It won't be long. All this is going to happen. And by then it probably won't matter because then we'll have the crazy, crazy fucking woman that laughs in your face on camera, laughs at you. When you give her a question about all these failed policies, she laughs at you. Whether or not it's a nerve, I don't know. I think she's just a crazy cackling witch. But anyway, that's who's gonna be president. Joe Biden is gonna be back home, drinking his insurer, watching Matlock, sitting on his money bed. That's what he's gonna be doing. And no one will hold him accountable. Because again, if some uppity fucking guy tries to bring charges against him, Kamala Harris will just pardon him. Whoa. What a vicious cycle, man. There's no way to escape this. And all you freaking Democrats that voted for this, where are you now? Where are you now? Alyssa Milano, why aren't you, why aren't you protesting? AOC, why aren't you protesting? All you squad members in Congress, why aren't you protesting this? This is a humanitarian crisis, the likes of which we haven't seen in decades. And you guys are saying nothing, not a damn thing. The only ones that are talking about it are the Republicans. And again, only a few brave Republicans. Most of the Republicans, they're just like the Democrats. They don't fucking care either. They don't even care. All the veterans that fought, in that war and gave some of them their limbs, their minds, some of them the ultimate price, their own life. What, what a disgrace to their legacy. You can argue the semantics of whether the war was right or wrong, but you can't argue the dedication that these, that these men and women make to the military, the things they give up. Okay. There's veterans walking around right now that are missing limbs. That are that are that are fucked in the head right now. That are that are, that are fucking scratching the head and going, what the fuck did we go there and do then? Why didn't we spend 20 years there to just throw it away? For what? What did we sacrifice ourselves for? fucking horrible this is beyond horrible and really this shouldn't this should have nothing to do with partisan lines every person that cares about america if you say you do whether or not you're a democrat or a republican or in whatever you should be pissed off about this and you should be holding the president accountable but the vast majority are not there's only a select few that are even saying anything and what can they do when the congress when the presidency is controlled by the Democrats, there's nothing they can do about it. They can get up and make a speech. They can put forward a resolution that won't get voted on, you know? I mean, right now, they should be pushing a bill through, an emergency bill to authorize the military to go in there and, and rescue every single American that's in danger right now. Now, if we have to go in there and fight and fucking kill and potentially lose more American lives, we have to do it. We can't abandon those people. But the, the, it came out of the president's mouth. No, no, we're leaving. October, they're, they're already leaving right now. The deadline is August 31st. The Taliban have said they're not gonna put up with any, any personnel that are on the ground, which means they're going to kill, if they're not already killing, which they are, they're gonna kill anyone they deem as part of the part of the American fucking regime. They're gonna they're gonna kill anyone. They're gonna kill their families. They're gonna hang their bodies up in the public square as an example. That's what they're gonna do. 
And if just one of those people is Americans, just one of those people, what a failure. This, this president should be removed. I mean, he should be removed already. But if that's not enough to fucking make you want this president removed, then I don't know what is. I don't know what would what would take for you to fucking cross that line. No president should aban abandon any American, no matter where they are. But that's what he's doing right now. And he's not only abandoning the Americans that are on the ground there, he's abandoning all the veterans that fought there. He's abandoning all the soldiers that are still in the military. He's abandoning the American people. He, go, he goes in front, spews all his lies and just walks away. This is your president, this is my president. This man is not fit to lead. This man is an incompetent, demented, old, racist daughter. That's what he is. And that's what he ran on. I'm moderate, Joe. I'm gonna take everything back to normal. I have a stellar foreign policy record. No, he doesn't. All it would take is a cursory to look to look at his records and what he voted on when he was senator and to see that this man's idea of foreign policy, he has no idea what he's doing. He's no he's at a chessboard and he thinks he's playing Monopoly. That's that's what that's what it is. This man again. He probably, if, if he's really that demented, he doesn't even know what the fuck he's doing. Neither does he care because he's always said, he's always shown with his actions that he doesn't care. He doesn't care about the American public because he's a, he's a class above you, you know? He's an elite. You're scum, man. He doesn't even care about the American people. I mean, just look at Nancy Pelosi at that, at that fundraiser. Everybody's sitting down. They're all rich people in Napa Valley. None of them are wearing masks, okay? Whether or not they're vaccinated, she's the very one pushing this mask mandate. None of them are wearing masks, but all the servants, all the people, all the waiters, they're all got masks on. That right there should be enough to tell you what they think about us. You know? Like some of you are so blinded by your fear of this virus, Right? Some of you are so blinded by your hatred of Donald Trump, even though you can't even say why you really hate him. Well, he makes mean tweets. Man, I can show you thousands of people that make mean, mean tweets that are in positions of power. You know what? What? There's pedophiles on Twitter right now that are able to, to post shit, you know? They're not bad. The president's bad. The president's bad because he because he says mean things. Okay? The fucking Taliban, the spokesman for Taliban, can post on Twitter. The Ayatollah can post on Twitter. But no, not Donald Trump. What is it gonna take, people? What is it gonna take for you to finally wake up? You know, if we all stand together as the American public, they can't do anything. They can't do anything. Take your mask mandate and shove it up your ass. Come and make us. Take your vaccine and shove it up your ass too. Well, what are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? Turn the military? They've already pissed off the military. You think the military wants to fucking serve this master? No way. They just showed the military that they don't give a fuck about them either. They don't give a fuck about them. So I, what is left except the elites? Again, they're relying on the collective stupidity of, of the public. That's what they're relying on. They're relying on you. You're so dumb that you can't see the authoritarian moment that's happening right in front of your eyes. You can't even see it, that's how dumb. They're, they're banking on the fact that you're dumb. Okay? 
See, in their hubris, that's how Donald Trump became president. They were, they were, they were banking on the fact that you guys were that most of the American public were dumb enough to believe that the Hillary Clinton would be a good president. That's what they were banking on. And when half the country stood up and said, "No, no, we see this dog for what it is. It's a fucking, it's a fucking lying, manipulative person." We're not gonna vote for this person, she's horrible. We'd rather vote for this guy who's an unknown political figure, right? We know who he is, he's a billionaire, narcissist, but we'd rather take that, right? Who, by the way, if you look at his message, he always was about America. This make America great a thing? He always said that. It wasn't something that just came off the top of it. He was always like that. He was always talking shit about China. He was always trying to put America first. You know? In their own hubris, they they assume that the majority of the Americans were going and when they when they didn't, that's why you, you could see on Hillary Clinton's face, even she couldn't believe it. And so that's what this is. This is a punishment to the to the rest of us to have the gall to stand up and say, no, no, we don't want Hillary Clinton. Oh, the gall of the American public. The gall of it. Oh, we got something for them. We got something for them. We do. We're just going to trample on their rights. Right? We're going to put this lockdown. We're going to destroy the economy when there was no reason to destroy the economy. We're going to do all of this as a punishment. How dare you think for yourselves, you know? Yeah, yeah, the Constitution says we the people, but that's not what it's really about. It's about we the elites, and you guys are the serfs, and you guys are supposed to do what we tell you. How dare you think on your own? That's what it's all about. This is a punishment to the people that actually believe in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. It's a punishment to us. When are you going to realize that? When are you going to wake up and realize that's what this is? Talk about biting the hand that feeds. The only reason why they have power is because we let them have power. If the whole country stood up right now and said, no, 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 we're not going to support this. We want this guy removed right now. You know, if his approval rating dipped down to zero, there wasn't one American in America that supported this man. If all the media including the left-wing media, if all the media stood up and said, no, this guy needs to be removed. Everybody stood up. No, we're not going to budge. We're not going to pay taxes. You know, We're not going to follow your mandates. We're not going to do any of that. until We're not going to even come to the table and talk until this man is removed. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Sick the military on us? That will not go well. If you don't think it's time to stand up and actually think in those lines, you're lost through it. You're lost. You're, you are completely lost. And I'm not talking about a violent uprising, okay? Because that will just bring pain and suffering to everybody. I'm talking about a, a collective mind uprising. That's what I'm talking about. Hold your fucking, your leaders accountable. You know? If we all stood up to Governor Ige here in Hawaii and said, no, no, we're not going to follow your mandate. We're not going to... Some of us are okay getting an experimental vaccine, but some of us aren't. And you can't mandate us that if we don't get this vaccine, we're going to lose our jobs. You can't do that. No, no. We'll just all collectively not go to work tomorrow. Then what are you going to do? You know? They would change their tune really, really quick. But half the country are not willing to take that chance. Half the country are fucking idiots. 